Good morning to one and all present here. I welcome you all to this webinar entitled Nanotechnology. It gives me immense pleasure to introduce today's resource person, Dr. Jagdish Loganathan, Director, Research and Development, Agathos Biologics, Cell and Gene Therapy, Fargo, North Dakota, USA. He completed his UG, PG, and PhD in Applied Microbiology, University of Madras. From 2003 to 2005, he worked as a senior quality control microbiologist in Dr. Reddy's Laboratories, pharmaceutical company, India. From 2010 to 2015, he worked as a postdoctoral fellow in Molecular Biology, Methodist Research Institute, Indiana University Health, Indian Apolis, Indiana. In his postdoctoral fellow project, mainly he focused on the role of PLR4 receptor in cancer progression and cancer prevention. In 2016 to 2017, he worked as a postdoctoral fellow in molecular biology, Department of Biological Sciences. During his postdoc project, he reported that Piper longumin has potent anti-cancer properties and selectively attack cancer cells by inducing stress. With a travel fund, he presented this study in Central Regional IEEA Conference, Sears Falls, South Dakota. From 2016 to 2017, he worked as a research associate in molecular biology, School of Pharmacy in North Dakota State University, Fargo, North Dakota. His studies pay a new direction to treat breast cancer cells for overcoming the recurrence of diseases in patients suffering from breast cancer. This study was presented in AAPS NDSU Pharmaceutical Research Symposium. Now he is working as a director, research and development, Agathos Biologics, Cell and Gene Therapy, for North Dakota, USA. Here he is working in cell lines obtained from aborted fetal tissue and contributed many products that are safe, effective, and save lives. Apart from this, he has more than 30 international and national publications in reputed peer-reviewed journals. He has presented papers in more than 25 international conferences and workshops. He is a reviewer for British Journal of Nutrition, Journal of Photochemistry and Photobiology, British Journal of Pharmaceutical Research, British Journal of Medicine and Medicinal Research, British Biotechnology Journal, European Journal of Medicinal Plants. He has membership in American Society of Pharmacognosy, American Association for Cancer Research, and American Chemical Society. On behalf of the staff and students of Plant Biology and Plant Biotechnology Department, I request Dr. Jagdish Loganathan to address the gathering. Hello, all. Uh, am I audible to every, everyone? Yes, yes. Okay. Hi, yes, sir. Oh, thank you very much, ma'am, uh, uh, for the kind introduction and a very nice introduction about me. Uh, I know Dr. Shiva for a very long time, and, and she is my very most senior in the lab. So when I joined his lab and she was a PhD, uh, she was she about to left the lab. She is completing her PhD. And it is very honor and presenting my research knowledge, sharing my research knowledge with her and her team. Uh, and for your kind information, it is almost like 12 a.m. in the morning for me. So it's not like I'm the I'm I'm just giving a talk at a midnight of the day. <laughs> okay. So if I just sleep, kind of fall asleep, please wake me up. Or else if I my talk makes you sleep. That's up to you. Okay, so can I go to the, ma'am, can I go to the presentation? Yes, uh, yes. Okay, thank you. Okay. So everybody can able to see my screen? Oh, 
Uh, how about now? Oh, yes. Okay. So as uh, uh, Dr. Arshiva mentioned about that, my experience in cancer biology for the last uh, 10 years in the United States, uh, where I learned a lot of uh, newer technologies in cancer biology. So the, the session I'm going to present today, it's a topic which I'm learning uh, newly. I'm just studying this topic. And I just want to present this topic because uh, it is new for me and it is, it's a very new for everyone, I think so. So the topic is about nanotechnology in cancer therapy. So you can see the logo, it's, it's called a Grand Canyon. I don't know whether you heard about this place. It's a very popular place in the United States. It has the millions of years of history. So it means that there are many things to explore in this world and it's very similar to in science. So in that, in that way, the exploring thing is that nanotechnology is a science. It's a science of very tiny thing. It's very, very tiny thing. How to explore nanotechnology in the field of cancer therapy. So everybody know nanosim, I think so, nanochips. So they are belongs to the chemistry and physical chemistry. So exploring this technique into the field of cancer biology is called nanotechnology in cancer therapy. Okay. I don't know why I put this slide, but I have a story to tell about why this slide is like and what are the talk I'm going to give. And before going to this one, I just want to say that what is nanotechnology means like, for example, everybody know microbes. Microbes are in a micro size. They can enter into your body and they can enter into your cell because your cells are a little bigger than the micro cells. For example, mycoplasma, it's a intracellular bacteria. So it can enter into your cells and it start grow. Similarly, nano size or the molecules, which can able to enter into the microbial cell. So using that molecules as a backpack, uh, you mean to say as a bag, you can put something inside the bag and it is sent into the cells and make the bag to explore. And whatever you put into the bag, it get explored into the cell and it makes an makes an, um, change in the cell. That was the basic principle of nanotechnology in the cancer. So I'm repeating one more time. It's a nanomolecule. The nanomolecule, which has a space inside, you're entrapping something, consider this nanomolecule as a bag, and you're putting a drug inside the bag, and you're sending this nanomolecule into the cancer cell so it can go into the cancer cell and where it can explode and release the drug, thereby it kills the cancer cell. That's the basic findings and intervention, inter, intervention in cancer research about nanotechnology. So the reason for this slide is that, I don't know whether everybody know about the high jump. I'm very sure that everybody know the high jump. You see the trend of the development of this uh, way of jumping in a in an era like so every uh, decades there was a different way of jumping you see that in 1900 the the gold medalist for the high jump he used to do the scissor cut that's a very popular in those days but later somebody found a different way to achieve a different height that is called western roll and the later again another person came okay this is a very old technique i'm going to find a different way of do the high jump that is straddle and finally, we have we, ca we came to this place called the Fosbury flop. You see the difference between the first gold medalist and the recent gold medalist. In the first time, the person who jumped got a gold medalist of 5.2 feet. And in the recent time, the height, the maximum height is about nine feet. I think nowadays it might be more than nine feet. I'm not sure about what is the height of that one. But the... The goal is one thing, high jumping. But the met method of high jump is varied from decades to decades and year to year. It doesn't happen by just by a single person. It's a it's it's an effort of all together, not just by effort of a single person. Like he might got a different trainer, he might get a, he might try to the different food. 
he might be trained in a different way he might be trained by different country people or many things all together this they achieve this kind of effort similarly in uh, science nowadays it's not like that in in those days we used to have the idea like for example when you play cricket so everybody will be like uh, he will be like when you ask them what is your role in a cricket he will say i am the bowler i am the batsman i am the everything but that's now not anymore like that science don't work like that anymore so it has become a called a system biology system biology means like that i am a biologist i know only biology i don't know anything about uh, chemistry i don't know anything about physics i don't know anything about mathematics but there are expertise in those fields they all come together to develop one concept that is called system biology in that case it doesn't matter you need to know everything in a science but you should know what is the goal in science for example if i'm a cancer biologist my goal is to know what is exactly about the cancer so what are the ways i can able to uh, treat cancer or study the cellular biology about the cancer so in that case i need to get help from the physical department i need to get from the help from the metabolomics i need to get help from the chemistry so all all of them all of the expertise or come together and work for a one particular field that is called system biology so the current science is going towards the system biology to achieve a bigger heights so we'll talk about what is nanotechnology here the nanotechnology means i am going to talk about the very tiny particles so like everybody know nano means it's a very very small like it's uh, it's 10 power minus 9 micro means 10 power minus 6 in size so any material which can able to get enter into the microbial cell easily pass through the cell membrane or a cell wall it is called nano materials so for example in united states for more than 18 billion dollars was invested between 2001 to 2013 i think those are the times everybody got to know about the nano chips and nano sim and today it has been increased the amount of dollars increase in nanotechnology is more nanotechnology is not just only for the biology it is for the, it is a very common field for the chemistry and physics so here the point is that the chemistry people can able to synthesize any size of nano material from a gold and those days it started in the year from 2010 there are people working on making a nano particles using mushrooms so in our lab some of the researcher they worked on the making a nano gold silver nano particles so your the microbes can able to degrade the gold material into tiny tiny small sizes of nano material that can be captured using the electron microscope and spectrophotometer and that can be characterized and used against the cancer cells which it's, it's a very similar technology here so here we know the problem the problem is how to find a cure or how to find a treatment for cancer that is the problem everybody know what is the problem is but nobody know what is the answer how to solve this problem so in this era the solving the problem is the biggest challenge these challenges can be answered by using a lot of technologies in those in those technology one is called the nanotechnology can you imagine how size the how small the nano will be like so these are the some of the examples of the nano size for example you can see um for uh, these are the blood cells and these are the nano materials so as i mentioned earlier you see the atom of the nano material is it's very tiny so it can be like you can make a nano chips using microbes you can make a nano nano material using a uh, chemical solutions the point is that you need to characterize the nano material you should know what is the size of the nano material and you should know whether you can able to break the nano material so once you can able to break the nano material you should know how to put something inside the nano material that causes entrapment or else you should know how to tag the nano material these are a very very sensitive works this can be done in a very sophisticated laboratories or labs which have a lot of facilities like having the uh, electron microscopy those kind of thing where the people used to make the nano materials and you can get those nano materials with collaborations and to see that whether you can able to entrap some of the drugs into the nano material that can be used for the your research purposes 
what are the types of nanomaterials currently available in research? So in my cases, I have been used liposomes very often. Liposomes are nothing but as a kind of a lipid molecule, which is currently available. I don't know how, how many of them are doing this uh, uh, transfection into the cells. Like if you want to put any DNA into the cells, uh, the commercially used uh, carrier is the liposomes, which can able to open up your cells so that the molecules can go inside the cells. So in, in that method, the one method is entrapping uh, doxorubicin. Doxorubicin is a commercially available chemotherapeutic drug against many cancers, basically, because it's a very broad spectrum anti uh, chemotherapeutic agents. What is the problem with the doxorubicin is, for example, I'm saying that doxorubicin create a lot of side effects. It, it won't just target the cancer cells when administrated into the system. It can also able to target your normal system, like normal cells. So it leads to a lot of side effects. How the nanomaterial plays a role here is that they break the nanomaterial and put the doxorubicin inside. And when injected into the patient, this, this nanomaterial is trained in such a way that whenever it reach exactly the cancer cells, when they hit the cancer cells, there it released the doxorubicin. So that the, the target for the doxorubicin is well uh, directed and well documented so that it can reach the cancer cell and release the drug so that the target will be only the cancer cell. It won't, it won't affect the normal cells. That's how nanotechnology plays an enormous role in uh, uh, preventing the side effects due to the lot of chemotherapy drugs. But it is not achievable. It's still a lot of people working on this area. Similarly, there are many examples. You see, there are polymeric nanoparticles. Here, what they do is that they didn't put any drug inside the nanomaterial, but they will do in a dual form. One is that they take a polymeric nanomaterial, they open the polymeric nanomaterial and put the uh, drug of interest on the surface of the polymaterial. They used to tag small molecules as which can able to bind to the cancer cells. For example, most of the cancer cells they hidden in the system in an anaerobic condition. That's called, we call them as a um, uh, hypoxic condition. Hypoxia means like, so the once the cancer form in your body, it started growing inside, it started growing and create environment around the uh, cancer cell, like an hypoxia, hypoxia thing, so that your immune system could not able to reach that region to kill the cancer cell because there won't be any oxygen over the region. So you need to design a nanomaterial which can able to release the drug under hypoxic condition. So that means that when you use the tag, some of the polymeric nanomaterials, it can bind to the cells, it can penetrate into the cell cells and reach the hypoxia region where the cancer cells hide themselves into the normal cells. And once they reach the hypoxia environment, it release the uh, doxorubicin or any kind of a drug. Similarly, there is a condition like at low pH or in a high pH, the cancer cells uh, hide there and it start growing. So it, re it is about reaching the targets wherever the cancer cells hide in a system. So these are the things can be achieved by nanomaterials. So currently I'm going to talk about, I'm, we already published a paper on how to target the cancer cells under the hypoxia environment. So I already given a, some brief description about how the nanomaterials can be used in a different field like that. I'm not going to talk about these electronics, energy, environment, and, uh, and food or something like that. But so in current era, nanotechnology is, has been used in a various field. It has a multitude effect on a different field. For example, when you talk about the, mm, okay, uh, electronics, Everybody is very familiar with uh, uh, today's uh, system. For example, the nano chips is a very commercially available and everybody known about the nano SIM and those kind of stuff. So similarly in a medicine also, there are many ways like they are, they are synthesizing a lot of nano chips uh, for diagnosing a different cancer types. That's the current investigation is a lot of labs are working on that one. For example, Everybody know it is not so easy to diagnose the cancer, but they are trying to come up with the nano chips 
so that when you have the sample from patient, when you drop a uh, uh, drop of a blood or a drop of a serum or drop of a saliva or drop of a, uh, these all contains exosomes. Exosome means nothing but it's a very, very uh, tiny, uh, it's non-cell material. It's a non-cell material, but it also carries a nucleic acid material. It is not, it, it does not need to be a cell. It is a non-cell material, but, but it also carry the nucleic acid material. So they made a nanochips, which can able to bind the DNA or RNA from the patients. Thereby you can able to diagnose what type of cancer is having, what specific cancer is having. So the in current, the research which I, where I worked in a chemistry department, it is a collaboration with the chemistry and engineering department. They are trying to develop a nanochips so thereby, when you get a sample from a patient, yeah. blood, saliva, anything like that, you can able to you can able to uh, capture that DNA into the nanochips. Thereby, you can able to diagnose what is what type of cancer this person is having and in what stage is not having. So it is a developing story. It is not uh, available right now, but people are working on that one. So that is a way of development in the research. There is no end because we have many questions unanswered so far in which one of the two major questions so far not answered is that how to diagnose cancer at a very early stage and how to treat cancer at any stage. So everybody know everybody will say that if you find diagnose the cancer at a very early stage, you can able to treat. I don't know how far it is sure, but there are two hurdles still so far in cancer biology is that how to do the diagnosis exactly, what type of cancer it is, and how to find a medicine or how to cure the cancer, how to prevent the cancer. So here the nanotechnology comes up in a role whether it can able to solve this problem or not. Uh, for your information, these fields I'm uh, because I'll just keep on working on many times, so I couldn't able to make sure that whether you can able to follow these topics. But uh, uh, hope you can understand whatever I'm saying because I'll try to communicate in such a way that everybody can understand. But don't worry that if you're not understanding, also it doesn't matter at this time because everybody is kind of naive. So. In a science, the important thing is that you should know the very basic thing at any, any cost. It doesn't matter that whether you know all kind of technology because any if you go to any lab, that lab is going to be new to you. So you should learn anything, whatever in this lab, but you should know what is the basic in science. That is very important. So, so in that case, I'm not going to say that you should follow everything, but the take home message would be like, what are the technologies available in this condition, in this, in this period of time? That's what I'm trying to explore here. So everybody know what is cancer is, but still nobody know what exactly the answer for the cancer is, because I have presented this slide in many, many places with a big, there will be a big doctors and MD people, but nobody is sure about what exactly is the cancer is, what is the cost is in the cancer, but wherever you see the slide, what is the main reason of the cancer is that they will say that you should have a good diet, uncontrolled diet, and whoever say they will put a cigarette, they'll say smoking leads to cancer. But I'm, I'm not sure how far it is very true, but everywhere it is the same thing. But smoking is one of the cost agents for cancer. What, <laughs> the next question is what exactly is the cancer is? Uh, the same question. So again, the answers will be like yeah, any abnormal changes in the uh, genome, like a chromosomal aberrations. These are the chromosomal aberrations like triploidy, ploidy, most of the things that leads to cancer. So how in a current time the cancer is diagnosed? There are different ways to diagnose cancer, like radiological diagnosis that everybody commonly use that one, the cytological diagnosis like immunohistochemistry, the histological diagnosis and uh, molecular diagnosis and looking for the tumor markers. So here comes the nanotechnology when you talk about the tumor markers. Tumor markers, as I mentioned that when, when somebody having a cancer, the first line of defense is the immune system. So when the immune system act on those particular cancer types, it you can see the antigens for the cancers will be secreted, excreted into the system. It can be through saliva, it can be through urine, whatever it is. 
but every every time when you collect the excretion they call them as, as exosomes so exosomes is nothing but it's a it's a kind of an antigen or a subcellular particle or a non cellular particle so but it carries a nucleic acid material any type of nucleic acid material it can be in a dna or it can be in a rna so getting that collecting this exosomes and purifying those exosomes which contains the information about the cancer how the the stage of cancer can be captured using the nano material thereby in the current trend they are trying to diagnose what stage of cancer it is and what type of cancer is it so uh, for example we can say that it is like um, um how to say that one what is the commercially the for for so i don't know it's it's a correct example it is like a pregnancy kit like so you have the chip in that it will save the the level of hormones in that similarly it is like a very easy thing when you have a chip when you put a drop of a, a sample from the patients it should show some color so very similar method of uh, finding the cancer but it is not a very easy easy path because they try because we need to uh, engraft with different way of uh, nucle different types of nucleic acid because in one cancer type there will be a multiple different type of nucleic acids will be there to diagnose okay these are the different ways in cancer diagnosis how the nanotechnology plays a role oh, okay so in a physics when you so talk about it, it's called quantum dots so it's can be a, it kind of a dot material which can be excited when it pass through some sort of lights or something like that similarly here you can see then it's a nanoparticle there are two ways that you can conjugate the nanoparticle with similar small molecules uh, antibodies fluorescent probes aptamer and targeting peptides thereby it can able to bind to the ctg cancer uh, target agents and and the exosomes it can able to detect the exosomes and the proteins rna so here the part is that the problem is that it's it is not a one single type of protein it won't be a one single type of a dna rna it cannot be a one single type of exosome so it will vary from patient to patient and it will vary from cancer to cancer and it vary from different stages of cancer so this is the challenge right now every researcher is uh, uh, facing today how to uh, come to us at some point at what is the antigen to detect any type of a cancer because that's the biggest challenge so that's why this nanoparticle has been conjugated with many different types of probes and proteins on the surface okay now we'll come to the real cancer statistics it's i got this from for january 2020 and after that there should be a slide but i couldn't able to uh, i didn't uh, take time to look into that but because after 2020 everybody were focusing on the covid 19 so i didn't i don't see that any researchers were worked more on this exhibiting these cancer statistics in the worldwide so so in a, the estimated new cases is breast cancer is almost like 276480 patients the estimated new cases the estimated death for the breast cancer is 42170 so in a men it's a very pre predominant of lung cancer and in for the women the predominant of the breast cancer is a very common in the united states so this is the statistics of the 2020 maybe it may be changed for sure it might be increased more with the death and the patients recognized so there are a lot of patients to work and you when you when you talk about the cancer the good thing is that you will be getting a lot of uh, samples specimen to study that's a very good thing about the research in cancer what is the history of cancer therapy it's a very long story from 1900 till till to this date there are many people are working and spending many times on uh, different cancer drugs uh, it start from a very commercially available arsenical drugs and and today the commonly used uh, chemotherapy drug is a doxorubicin which is which can able to target the um, Uh, dna of the cancer cells in addition to that 5 fluorouracil and when i started my research career our lab is focused on how the mushrooms can be uh, used as a
uh the part uh, i got a some message from is it everything okay Yes, it's working. Oh, okay. Sorry, because so in the cancer drug, like our lab, when I start my in a research, our lab usually work on the uh, mushrooms. Uh, might be Dr. Shiva is she didn't for work on the cancer cells, but she is a taxonomist those days. So, but that's very helpful. Like uh, people like us that when when they found when they tax when they documented the very different types of mushrooms. My job, my research is like that, uh, whether we can use these mushrooms, we can study the, the medicinal properties of the mushrooms, the area I choose for the cancer research. So in that case, those time, the, the role of mushroom in cancer treatment. So it's still, there are a lot of people who are working in uh, identifying the drugs from the cancer. So why I'm saying is that apart from the chemical drugs, there are many biological agents uh, people are working on. For example, I in my, one of my postdocs, I worked on Piper Longman. Uh, we call them as a uh, Tipili in Tamil. So I, I I don't know. It's so they started working on when I when I joined the lab. They started working on Piper Longman. They asked me, "What do you know? What you heard about Piper Longman? You know where they where they get those samples? They exactly go got those samples from India. They collected, they got those samples from India and they started working on the Piper Longamine, telling that this Piper Longamine having the anti-cancer property, especially the pancreatic cancer. So it's a, it's it's now, the Piper Longamine become a very big story here. Everybody started working on that one, like started working on the mushrooms so that we have a very potential uh, herbs in our country where to explore cancer property. I'm just giving an example. If somebody wants to work in the future, so don't worry that there are a lot of herbs are available in our country. You can try any any type of herbs. Make sure that you are working with the herbs and uh, finding something and not exporting the herbs to the other country where they can work and they can pr produce many data on that one. So Hallmarks of cancer. What are the hallmarks of cancer? For example, EGFR inhibitors. So epidermal growth factor receptors. Every cancer cell, cancer cells, they express EGFR receptor on the surface of them. The, the role of the receptor is that getting more nutrition to the cells for multiplying. So this is one of the hallmark. Hallmark in the sense like that, there are many ways the cancer cell try to escape from the host defense and the drug in growing themselves so easily. In similar to that, it can grow in a hypoxia environment. As I said, it can find a different uh, uh, breakdown of sugar molecules for getting the energy. It can able to metastasize. Metastasize in the sense they can form a pseudopodia. They can, instead of being a circle in form, they can just make a pseudopodia and then migrate to the different part of the organ. So those are the conditions it is very hard to treat those patients because it's called metastatic properties of the cancer. For example, in breast cancer, everybody know there are two, uh, three types of cancer. One is that the non-metastatic breast cancer and the other one is the metastatic. So metastatic in this cancer, the cancer can uh, migrate to other part of the body from the breast to the uh, pancreas, brain, or ovary, those kind of the regions. Those patients will be very hard to treat those patients. So that is one of the hallmark of the cancer. But so when you talk about cancer, there are many things to study, but how to solve this problem? So imagine like this is a hurdle, okay? So it has, a, it has like a different way. If you want to break this one, you need to individually, you need to break like one by one to make it down. But what the researcher are saying is that there should be some point where you can target that particular, re particular type region of the cell or particular region where it collapses everything. So the now research is focused on, you cannot target one, uh, all this R mark one by one. It will take a lot of time. But how the research is they're focusing is that, so in targeting all these hallmarks, there should be one, one or there should be one thing which plays a central role that need to be discovered in a, any type of a cancer. So that was, I used to say to every, every, um, uh, somebody, somebody raised a hand. 
okay so that will play a central role to target so here that's what the slide i'm trying to show here is that this central region need to be identified so when you target this particular region in any cancer types you can you can demolish any type of a cancer cell but it is still under the discover it is it is still in under the research so can what is hype something No, I, I saw some technical fault. You can continue. Oh uh, yeah, I saw somebody raise their hand, so that's why I just want to. Yeah. So when you have a time, just go and check for the hallmarks of the cancer. There are still there are uh, new hallmarks. The hallmark in the sense like that. In what are the areas these cancer cells can able to invade the uh, other cell types? thereby escaping from the drugs which are commercially available and this is a very important slide why i'm saying is that uh, in my 10 years of uh, research experience this is a very important point like why there is no uh, proper answer for treating the cancer is that because everybody knows that each cancer is very different and each patients are very different but there should be the common thing is that there is should be one common thing so we need to discover that one common thing in targeting or treating these cancers so that is the mystery behind in cancer treatment what is hypoxia hypoxia is nothing but as i mentioned earlier like you see this is a blood vessel and this is the aerobic environment so what is happening is that when there is a blood in contact with these cells they will be having the aerobic environment but what this cancer cells will do is that to escape from the immune system they just go beyond this aerobic environment and they start growing this here so if, uh, where your blood system cannot able to reach and they will start grow easily so what happen is that when you use any drug against these cancer cells the drug cannot able to reach that particular target so instead the drug will reach up to this level and it will damage your normal cells that leads to side effect so here what the role of nanomaterial is that as i mentioned earlier the nanomaterial is be conjugated in such a way that it is a very tiny particle which can pass through this uh, intracellular regions pass through this inter intracellular regions and reach the hypoxic environment not just reaching the hypoxic environment the nanomaterial is designed in a such a way that once it reaches the hypoxic environment they need to release the drug once they release the drug the prime tar target for the cancer um, nano materials is is your cancer cells so <clears throat> once it reaches the prime target it, it leads to necrosis on the cancer cell you can see the necrosis necrosis of the cancer that was the basic idea of the uh, targeting uh, hypoxia and tumor micro environment using nano material this paper was already published in 2020 in a nano uh, acs nano science uh, so as i mentioned you you imagine that i already show the nano materials like how it looks like you can see this is a nano material this is engrafted and trapped with the doxorubicin drug you can see the doxorubicin drugs and it has uh, some filaments expanded extended outside of the nano material and you can see this is the irdg peptide what is the role of this irdg peptide is that it can able to bind integrin molecule which is expressed on the surface of the cancer cell this integrin is a growth hormone receptor which is which usually express more on the surface of the cancer the the another thing to know about this integrin is that it can be expressed more on the hypoxia hypoxic living cancer cells not just the cancer cells which living in the normal environment which will be more expressed in the hypoxic region we call them as the nrp1 uh, receptor so when you when you make a nano material which contains the doxorubicin inside in addition to that the dox the nano material is conjugated with irdg peptide this is irdg peptide so the role of this peptide is that it can able to bind the integrin receptor as i mentioned the nrp1 receptor thereby once it bind to the receptor it has been endocytosis get into the cancer cell thereby it release the drug doxorubicin once it released you can see the cancer cells will die so this part i did because but no but this was making an nanomaterials that did by a chemistry department i have no idea about what how they make those things 
and conjugating the nanomaterial that by chemistry department and they examining the nanomaterial is done by the physics department they do the size very size capturing and everything and the biology part was done by me so the biology part is like that we'll grow the cancer cell we'll treat this nanomaterial of different concentration to see the cytotoxic effect on the cancer cell that is up to the in, in vitro level <coughs> And later, once we have uh, some potential data like that, so here the question is that how can you grow the cancers in a hypoxic environment? There are hypoxia chambers are available right now. It's very similar like growing the microorganism, the anaerobic microorganism in the hypoxic chamber. Similarly, these cancer cells also grown in the hypoxic chamber, thereby treating these cancer cells with a different concentration of the nanomaterial. When you talk about here as a non-targeted means that the nanomaterial which does not have the irdg peptide it means that it can bind anywhere targeted means the nanomaterial which has the irdg peptide it can bind only at the cancer cells which are in hypoxic environment so these are the experiment plan we designed to see whether the uh, the complex we made is exactly binding to the cancer cells in the hypoxia region you can see the nucleus stain here in targeted this is the control and a non-targeted one and a targeted. You can see more of the nucleus. Uh, you can see the cell death over here. So yeah, I think uh, we used uh, uh, PI stain, I think so on that one. And it, and it is in the animal study. It's in the in vivo student, uh, study a xenograft model. So when you talk about xenograft model is nothing but like that. You take a cancer cell, like, like 1 million cells uh, of a cancer types and you take a nude mice, nude mice, which is a lack of T cell immunity, and you just engraft that cancer cells into the uh, memory part of the mouse, memory part for inducing the breast cancer. So it's, it's, it seems to be like a very, uh, very uh, tough technique, but it is a very easy technique. The only thing is that you need to get the approval from the animal research IACOC because animals are too expensive here. And the other thing is that you just need a cancer cell. You can inject the cancer cell any part of the body it forms, it started forming the tumor. Once the animals started forming the tumor, you need to treat those animals with the different uh, drugs as we planned in the in vitro study. So it is here you can see the, the control, the polymerism. Polymerism is a, a type of nanomaterial, but does not have any drug. And doxorubicin, you see that it's a free doxorubicin because it is not entrapped in any nanomaterial. And targeted means then the doxorubicin polymerosome and the IRDG peptide and everything together. That is called targeted. That target the uh, cancer cells in the hypoxia environment. Excuse me. So here they measure the uh, tumor size uh, every day. So uh, th those techniques are very, uh, very straight. You can, uh, once you start and know how to do those things, it can be very easy, but, but you can look into the methods, how they do those things. Like, it's like, do you heard about the vernier caliper? They measure the tumor using the vernier caliper, like, uh, and, they, uh, and, and they dissect the tumor into half and they take the images of that one by histochemistry. So, you, so what here they're trying to show here is that you can see the, uh, death of the cancer. This call, they call this a necrosis of the cancer tissue. Well, after doing the uh, uh, um, the killing the animals, sacrificing the animals. So here we are seeing the uh, expression of this uh, NRP1, uh, STAT3 proteins and Cas3. But everybody know what is STAT3 is that STAT3 is nothing but is one of the transcription factor uh, where it can lead to the apoptosis of the cancer cells. So here, the point is that here we are trying to show that the STAT3 is activated going down and is induces the caspase 3 caspase 3 is kind of, kind of a programmed cell death up a marker. Uh, everybody used to work. It's not a, it's, it's, it, it is a very, it's not very, po very popular one. And, and this is not just a, a common marker used for the uh, cell death. Nowadays, there are diff very different markers that are available. But at, at the end, CAS3 should be there because CAS3 is leads to the programmed cell death or called as apoptosis. And you can see the gap DH is a loading control. And uh, 
I don't know. So Western blot is a very neat experiment, but it is a, still it is a very valid experiment still so far. Uh, in Western blot means that you will collect the proteins from the cancer cells after doing the treatment and use the STH page to run those protein samples and you can see the bands uh, using the after after putting those bands into the primary antibody and treating them with the secondary antibody. This is the pathway I designed for this uh, study. Basically, it is not at published, but uh, our team is working on that one right now. We are just developing this program. So as I mentioned that <clears throat> this is a nanomaterial which contains the doxorubicin. This is the IRDG peptide. So this IRDG peptide will bind to the NRP1 uh, receptor, which expresses on the surface of the cancer cells, whereby it can be taken into the cell and it can release the nanomaterial, that is the doxorubicin inside the cell, and which can activate the STAT3 pathway and lead to uh, cell apoptosis. So this is called the molecular cell signaling. So it is not like that. Uh, we are not just telling that it is killing the cancer cells. We need to show what is the uh, signaling mechanism happening inside the cancer cell, thereby the cancer cell is going to the death. That's a program to cell death. So when you see that, you can see the apoptotic markers like proteins like P53, caspase 3, caspase 9, and PARP has been increased. Some of the proteins, the cyclin D1, which is responsible for the uh, cell cycle of the cancer cell, which is going down. So it should be like that. Like when you treat any drug for the cancer drug, the cyclin marker, protein marker should go down and the apoptotic marker is supposed to be go up. So this is called the programmed cell death. Uh, if none of these things happening and you see just a cell death, that means the drug is non-vital. That means the drug is not just going to kill the cancer cell. It is also going to kill the normal cells. So that means the necrotic process. And what we are seeing is the apoptotic process. Uh, and I think we are up to the close of the presentation. So there are many advantages using the nanomaterials in the world. Maybe you can see those advantages. Some of the disadvantages I just want to say here is that <coughs> I don't know how far it is true that it can destroy a lot of jobs in something like that because it can reduce the manpower or something like that. I'm not sure about that one, but for making an nanomaterial is not a simple task. It needs a lot of effort. We need a lot of people in making the nanomaterial. In not just making the nanomaterial, we need to have innovators in creating the new, new nanomaterials. So the, the future minds or the young minds are more uh, needed in the future area of research to uh, innovate a lot of new nano chips and nano materials with a, because these are very tiny things we should look in a very big eyes so it might be it might create it might create a lot of new jobs or it might going to open a new way of science in the future but the other thing is worried about this that uh, they're talking about the nano uh, weapons and uh, nano bio weapons uh, i'm not sure about those things but I see one of the advantages so far. There are some disadvantages with the nanotechnology up to the close. The future direction is that, so the direction is that going towards the, looking for the, uh, with, the we, with, with what is the problem, we know what is the problem is that, and we are going towards the direction how to solve those problems. There are many directions right now, in, in especially in cancer, cancer research, there are people talk about the nanotechnology, cell and gene therapy, in addition to that, uh, what is that? Um, uh, using uh, many herbal drugs against the uh, nano, against the cancer cells. So that <clears throat> there are many researches going on. I, I know that uh, in India, this field has been uh, a tremendous growth so far I have seen. Like where, when we do a research that time itself, we, we, had a, we got to know there was a technology called nanotechnology, but right now it is working very actively. I met a lot of people from India in conference over here. Uh, from uh, but uh, from Beckman Counter and uh, uh, Redis Laboratories, they are making some nanomaterials. So India is also spent a lot of money on that one uh, to develop this technology. But in the current way that uh, United States, Germany uh, are the lead lead in the nanotechnology field. Uh, I like to so we are kind of come to the end of the slides. I like to thank uh, uh, my team. Uh, so Dr. Sliva is my first postdoc supervisor. And I also like to thank uh, my uh, PhD supervisor, Dr. V. Kavi Arison. And uh, 
other people like and i also talked uh, thank uh, dr shiva is because i didn't had a chance to thank her because when i finished my phd she was not there i don't know whether she had my viewer the thing is that if you see this mushroom this is uh, agaricus etrosus mushroom i got this mushroom from her and she made a picture of the mushroom so why i put this uh, picture uh, especially is that so there was a question that whether this mushroom is edible or non edible so one day i found that this mushroom was eaten by the snails then i concluded that okay this mushroom should be edible so there was a question was that because this consists of wild edible wild they say it's a wild mushroom but i am not sure about the but i got this mushroom from her and and uh, she draw a picture of the mushroom she know how to do the tax morphological taxonomic identification and she draw and i put those picture in my thesis and it's still there and thank you very much ma'am for that uh, nice uh, draw art so and this is my team we are still working on how to explore the cancer biology and in a current job i'm not working much on the cancer biology but i just want to say some of the few things about the current job is that so right now everybody running towards the covid vaccine so it's like a similarly we are also working on the covid vaccine uh, making a covid vaccine right now it, it's like uh, maybe in future like it, the cell and gene therapy is the booming field right now so gene therapy in the sense uh, adeno associated viral particles are commercial it's a well known if you have a time you can write it down a a v a a v adeno associated viruses so those are the viruses which are commonly used for uh, gene therapy it is nothing but you can uh, create a virus by artificially you can create a virus with a uh, different plasmids and uh, when you create that virus you should know what kind of a gene you want to put into that virus so for example i want to cure i want to cure uh, make a vaccine for covid i want to make a vaccine for polio you need to put that particular uh, gene of interest into that viral material so that it can make a virus so you can use those virus because that virus is harmless because it it does not contain any virulent factor so but it can able to go into the cell and it can able to transport the gene of interest that we call them as a transgene so it is a very interesting field right now it's it's it is developing in the last 20 years it's more than nanotechnology if anybody are more interested just learn if you can if you want i can send you some of the articles of that one so it is called aav adeno associated virus in the cell and gene therapy so i think uh, maybe i may be very short because it's a very unusual time for me it's like almost like uh, like 12 30 for me in the midnight <laughs> i i didn't know why except like i said 10 o'clock i didn't realize that how the time difference we are having okay so uh, if i'm not prepared well because maybe it's unusual time that maybe i may be a little fast in my presentation uh, i'll be very happy to answer your questions and uh, if you want to have any questions so you can also shoot an email to me so that i can uh, reply you in a comfortable way uh, thank you very much all thanks for the uh, invitation thank you very much ma'am so if you have any questions please Oh sure I can give my mail id okay that's not a question <laughs> yes it's a very nice presentation jagdish thank you very much ma'am so it doesn't matter you need to ask the questions now you can also send an email to me so that i can answer the questions yes definitely definitely uh, but i will i will say i will encourage yeah i will encourage the students if there is if there are any students is there please try to uh, ask questions so that you can learn uh, because um, when you ask some questions you you it doesn't it is doesn't mean to be it's a good question or any bad question like that but it it will give an uh, encouragement for you in future to go further so i will always encourage that one yep
thank the management and principal for providing this opportunity. I thank Dr. Raghavish Loganathan for enlightening the students in new technology. I thank the audience for the presence. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Jagdish, for your uh, for accepting our invitation and uh, for your presence in late night. No problem. Thank you. It's my pleasure. You. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. Um. Okay, madam. Thank you, madam. Okay. Uh, yes, thank you, Jagdish. You can okay, leave. Bye. Okay, bye.